recognizes Representative Hope. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I urge my colleagues to join me in voting no on Senate Bill 455. The basic reason, and I find myself agreeing with my colleague across the aisle, it is the season for miracles after all. Um, the basic reason is that the one corporation that stands to profit from this bill, the lone beneficiary of this legislation, doesn't need our help. I wanna start out by saying that my position isn't an anti-business position. It isn't even a partisan position. It's a smart governance position. It's about good policy, and it's about basic fairness and accountability. If we make the changes sought here, it will result in a one-of-a-kind deal like no other in the state of Michigan. Here's what this bill look, looks like. It looks like we're helping one multi-billion dollar corporation change the rules in the middle of the game. And it looks that way because that's exactly what we'd be doing. Even though you might have been told, like I was, that the two laws at issue here contradict one another, it's not true. You might have been told, like I was, that this multi-billion dollar corporation got into a contract that didn't reflect their agreement or their understanding of the agreement. That's simply not true either. The language of the agreement is perfectly clear. Under paragraph five, it says, the parties acknowledge that the benefits provided under the Renaissance Zone Act, do not include relief from the payment of certain property taxes relating to bonds, school sinking fund obligations, and special assessments described in the Property Tax Act. It doesn't get much clearer than that. The fact is, Switch became aggrieved by this very clear language when the school district's voters passed a new millage. If this hadn't happened, I doubt that we would be asked to reconsider their tax break at this time. The company in question here isn't just a little mom and pop operation. Their stock is publicly traded. traded. Their net worth as of last month is estimated at $3.6 billion. In 2017, their CEO reportedly received a $95 million compensation package. So with their hordes of lawyers and lobbyists and public relations people, this is a very sophisticated operation. So it's hard for me to believe that they signed something they didn't understand. And what's more, they say their business model relies, like my colleague stated, on low taxes. So that makes it doubly hard to understand. You know what else is hard to believe? That this corporation will create the number of jobs they've pledged to create in exchange for the tax breaks they've already received. They're basically on the honor system. They self-report. And if they don't honor their commitment to the state of Michigan, there are no real consequences. They lose nothing. The only losers are the Michigan taxpayers. Can we hold Medicaid recipients who will have to get jobs to the same lax honor system? Or is that laughably contradictory to the system of crony capitalism that we're per perpetuating? I'll say it again, this company doesn't need our help, but you know who does? Our schools? our communities, our infrastructure, and this tax break will hurt them. It will. We can pledge to hold the school aid fund harmless all day long, but there's still a cost if we hold the schools harmless at the expense of our general fund. Which department will be affected? Which program will be cut? Will it be a program that helps people who actually need help? I fear it will be. Of course it will be. Like I said at the beginning, this isn't anti-business or anti-capitalism. It's about smart, fair, responsible economic development that benefits more than just one company. And this isn't it. I urge my colleagues to join me in voting no. Thank you.